Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall with a rare treat. I've got a battle report for you all today. Playing Nurgle Blessed Sons versus Flesh Eater Quartz Gristle Gore. So let's take a look at the lists. So, as I said, running Nurgle, my host was Blessed Sons. I had Festus the Leech Lord with Blades of Putrefaction, a great unclean one with Bile Blade and Doomsday Bell, and his spell was Favored Poxes, and then a Harbinger of Decay who was my general, and he took the mandatory Foul Corrupter command trait, which uh, allows you to get a free at the double every turn. Uh, within 12 inches of him, and then the artifact is the Blot Shell Bioplate, which lets him reroll saves. So then, for my battle line, I've got a whole bunch of Blight Kings, two units of 10, two units of 5, and then a unit of 4 Puskoil Blight Lords, coming to an even 2,000 points, and 177 Tough Wounds. So, I really like this list a lot. Um, there's a couple of changes that I think I would make in the future, a few other things to try, but this generally worked really well in this game, um, and I think I'm probably just going to do a video later talking more specifically about this list, what I like, how Blessed Sons works, and all that. But moving on to my opponent's list. So, we've got Allegiance is Flesh Eater Quartz, Grand Court is Gristle Gore, we have an Abhorrent Arch Regent that is the General with the Savage Strike Command trait. Artifact is Grish Mosh Moshard. And Lore of Madness is Blood Feast. We've got an Abhorrent Ghoul King on Royal Zombie Dragon with the Grim Garland. Lore of Madness is Monstrous Vigor. And the Mount trait is Deathly Fast. Then we've got three Royal Terror Geist and a unit of six Crypt Horrors and the Royal Menagerie Battalion comes up to 1960 uh, for this list. So let's get into it, shall we? All right. So just real quick, this is all of like the fully painted stuff from my opponent's army. And I just really wanted to show this off because it looks really good and I want to encourage this army's completion and then see it showing up at uh, bigger tournaments, winning painting awards, as it definitely should be. It's beautifully painted. It just needs to get finished. Um, a lot of half-painted models in the army and it's some slow going, but it is looking beautiful so far. So, and I apologize, some of these pictures are a little foggy or blurry, but uh, I think I just had a little bit of greasiness or something on my lens. So, on the, on, well, my left side, my opponent's right side, the unit of six horrors, the terror geists there in the middle, with the uh, bone chair and the arch regent up on the bone chair. And then on the other side, we continue on with the other terror geists and the uh, zombie dragon over there on the other side. I had my uh, feculent gnarl maw basically in the middle of the board. And then over on my right flank, I had a unit of five uh, blight kings my unit of uh, Pusquail Blight Lords, my Harbinger of Decay hanging out over there, my Great Unclean One hanging in the middle of the board with Festus on his side. Then I had my two units of 10 Blight Kings over here on my left flank with another unit of five Blight Kings hanging out behind them. And... As I didn't mention it before, our scenario here is focal points. So we've got the four objectives around the outside and the one object additional objective in the middle. So 
I rolled up my cycle of corruption and landed on Plague of Misery, which is the absolute worst spot on the wheel, and it's also completely useless against this particular matchup. So that 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 that's going to get changed as quickly as possible. So my opponent outdropped me, took the first turn, and moved the a whole bunch of stuff forward. A zombie dragon that is sort of in the middle there. Two terror geists backing him up. The third terror geist uh, hanging out on the center objective. And then we had some summoning take place as well. Uh, behind those horrors, we had... Um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Uh, Vargeist? Vargolf? One of those. He popped up back there. And then on the other side of the board, we had ghouls pop up, and they were close enough to grab that objective as well. So, at this point, he's covering the center objective and two objectives on his side of the field, and I'm about to get pounced on by a whole lot of flappy flaps. So, he charged in with both terror guys. Um, this picture right here, this was the scream off of the terror geists did a few wounds onto my uh, Pusquale Blight Lords and my Great Unclean one. Everybody survived, though, so not a big deal. Um, actually, and you see here in the lower left, my uh, Harbinger of Decay. I actually, uh, after I had taken the initial picture, I just kind of moved him. I, that was like right after my last drop in deployment, and I just kind of decided to change where it was uh, after I had taken the picture. So he's over there closer to the Great Unclean one, just waiting for everything to come in. So this is what it looked like after charges. He held back that zombie dragon and sent in both of those terror geists, one into my unit of Buscoils, one into my Great Unclean one. So this is what it looks like after the first round of combat. I lost one Puscoil, did 11 damage back onto that zombie drag. I'm sorry, that terror geist. Then my great unclean one took seven damage and did seven damage back to that terror geist. So pretty decent overall in this particular combat. It wasn't like... Um, it, it wasn't the blowout, uh, you know, he didn't roll well, didn't get a lot of those, uh, big six mortal wound bites, so that was good for me. So, things were looking pretty good after this initial charge, and then after healing, my great unclean one is on five wounds when we go over to my turn, and I managed to get him up to 12 um, after the uh, mortal wound from Blessed Sons uh, off of uh, the Puscoil dying. And then this is just another shot of what's going on in the middle here. So after the first battle round, um, I scored four, my opponent scored four, uh, I won priority into the second battle round, getting the double turn. And I moved the wheel over to Feckin' Vigor, so I was plus one to wound. Uh, and that's going to be very helpful in this turn now. So I slid some things over here. My uh, Harbinger of Decay slid over, and I'm going to be moving those... Blight Kings up further in a moment. And you see here those Blight Kings moving up the battlefield to start grabbing objectives. I think this is actually... I think I might have some slides out of order here. Because um, this was... Uh, this was definitely in my first turn was moving everything up the battlefield. 
So the Blight Kings moved around the side and made the charge on the zo- the uh, not zombie dragon, the Terrorgeist, all the way on the right end, uh, trying to knock that bad boy out. And my Puscoils will also then be able to swing around, pile in, and get all three of those guys in. I activated my Harbinger of Decay's command ability, so everybody's got extra saves against that stupid Derogeist, which definitely came in handy. And then up the middle, I charged in a unit of 10 Blight Kings into that Terrorgeist that was holding that center objective and claiming that objective and starting to do a lot of damage into that Terrorgeist. Ended up, once I piled in, I did seven wounds to it, which was pretty good, I think, and I was able to get my guys all the way around, still keep the objective. Uh, So that was pretty solid, and this was, I activated those first, so I'm going to definitely be taking some wounds on the opposite side of this once that Terrorgeist attacks back, but with Blessed Sons, I'm also going to be kicking back some Mortal Wounds onto the Terrorgeist. So over on the right-hand side, that Terrorgeist uh, ended up getting killed off by all of those Blight Kings, um, and not too many more wounds going on to my Puscoils. Um, kind of it, having a bit of a pillow fight in the middle with the Great Unclean one and the Terrorgeist. Uh, the Terrorgeist is bracketed pretty far down, so he's not doing a lot of damage. And my Great Unclean one is a Great Unclean one, so he's just not taking a lot of damage. And he's continually kicking back mortal wounds when he's doing his wounded mortal wound save. Uh, on a six. So he just keeps kicking back mortal wounds. And you'll see up at the top there, I did lose a few more uh, Blight Kings in that Terrorgeist battle and kick back some mortal wounds, which was really good. And that Terrorgeist is now on pretty low health. So it's now got 10 wounds on it after all of those Blessed Sons Mortal Wound kickbacks. So in general, this turn uh, was pretty good. This is actually now the actual divider into uh, the second battle round. I moved everything up further and had a unit of Blight Kings run up. They're just within seven inches of the tree. The Puscoils are in position to pounce on the zombie dragon and I've still got everything hanging out there on that Terrorgeist in the middle. Uh, My Great Unclean one manages to finish off the Terrorgeist that he was on with uh, just vomiting on him, which was pretty sweet. I always love when my... uh, Great Unclean One just pukes on people and it does some damage. So that was fun. So this is after charges. I did a little bit of a tricky charge there with my Blight Kings that you see up at the top. I kind of, I charged the Terrorgeist and then strung my models out so that I had more models within six inches of that objective then my opponent had ghouls within six inches of that objective so i was able to claim that as well i got my puscoils in there onto the zombie dragon and i still have a pretty big squad over on that terrorgeist in the back so i did a bunch more damage over here onto that zombie dragon and on the left I moved in my other unit of 10 Blight Kings to start dealing with those horrors over on the left-hand side. Uh, Spoiler alert, that did not go well. Uh, I did not have a very good time against those guys. As you can see, I took out four horrors, lost a bunch of dudes in the process, 
And that Vargolf is about to bring back a whole lot of horrors. So this is what things look like in the center. I lost all but one of that 10-man unit of Blight Kings that was taking on the Zombie Dragon, but I finally was able to knock it out. My unit of five Blight Kings that was grabbing that objective managed to stay there. I lost one more Puscoil in that battle with the Zombie Dragon, but the unit fights uh, lives to fight another day. And this is just showing over here the uh, holding that objective. So at the end of the top of turn two, I scored six points. So now I'm at 10 to my opponent's four. And into the bottom of turn we go. So he started moving up those ghouls to take on my putrid blight kings that are hanging out there on his objective. Over in the middle, I lost another Puscoil in fighting with that zombie dragon. Kind of as expected, but you see there he's on uh, nine wounds taken. So he is kind of already on his last legs. That zombie dragon is not, not long for this world. And then once we get charges... All of those ghouls come in and do a tremendous amount of damage to those Blight Kings. They were throwing some ridiculous number of attacks because uh, they got the spell off on them. So they're, uh, they're going to be taking a lot out of that, and I'm definitely losing that objective. Over on the left-hand side, the Vargolf comes in and is uh, going to start doing some work. In addition to those horrors, on this particular turn, he did not get any horrors back. Uh, in the future, that will not be the case. So this is, I threw some, I activated first against his ghouls and was able to take a bunch of them out, but it was definitely not enough to stop them from doing a ton of damage to my Blight Kings. Over here, we after combats, we finished off that zombie dragon. So now we've got all of the, zomb the zombie dragon and all of the terror geists off the table. All he's got left is that arch regent, some ghouls, some horrors, and the Vargulf. So things are looking pretty good for me, although a lot of my troops have also been cleaned out at this point. So this is just the result of combat over here. I lost three of my Blight Kings. I've got two left. Uh, again, the Mortal Wound kickback off of those guys dying was definitely useful. I really liked that a lot. Uh, killed a couple more ghouls just for free. So it worked pretty well. And then this is what it looks like over on the left-hand side. Uh, I lost all but three of my blight kings that were over there it was a bad situation um they were they were uh quickly dying they he got some good rolls off and killed a lot of my dudes and i did not do a lot of damage in return so at the end of the second battle round my opponent scored two more points so he's up to six and I was on 10 points. I win priority into the third battle round. So away we go. Um, we got the Plague of Misery off, so I sprinkled some mortal wounds around again. And then I moved the wheel back to Feck and Vigor, getting uh, plus one to wound on all of my attacks. So that was pretty strong. Over here, um, my goal was really to just block those ghouls from doing much of anything. I didn't want them to really be able to easily run onto other objectives. So I just got my Blight Kings in the way and my Harbinger of Decay in the way. Uh, so that he kind of had to eat through those first before doing anything else. Over here, I just 
backed my Blight Kings out of that combat and jumped on the objective so that um, you know, his Vargeist was just outside of the uh, range of that objective, so I was able to claim it for the turn and uh, keep those Blight Kings around for another day. Not that they're going to last that much longer. And over here in the center, I just moved everybody up to have some extra bodies on that objective in the middle. Not a lot going on this turn. I just retreated out of all of my combats and avoided new combats. So uh, I was playing conservatively, just was playing to the objectives and really wanting to keep things, uh, you know, keep my eyes on the prize and not get too aggressive with things. So I scored six more points on that turn. I'm up to 16 to my opponent's six. Um, that's the end of the third battle round. I'm sorry, the end of the top of the third battle round and going into the bottom on my opponent's turn. He brought back two horrors, which sucked big time. Those guys are definitely going to die. Um... Over in the center, his Arch Regent moved up to uh, start challenging things over there, as well as that Vargolf uh, moving into my Great Unclean one. You'll notice my Great Unclean one still on only five wounds out of his 16, so it's going to be pretty hard to actually kill him. But, you know, giving it the old college try anyway. And you'll see over here the Ghouls... Uh, make their attacks or uh, you know make their charge into both the Blight Kings and the Harbinger of Decay. Um, a little bit of an aggressive move there, I think. And over here, charges into the guys in the middle to start trying to claim that middle objective. Over here with the Horrors, I lost another Blight King and I did virtually nothing back to the horrors so that, that flank that flank is lost basically um it, it's good that i'm already sort of up on points uh if i was trying to claw back i would be in really bad shape right now but i'm in a pretty good position uh when i threw attacks at the ghouls i killed off like half of them and he kept all of the guys that were over on the Harbinger of Decay. Now, the Harbinger of Decay had also activated his command ability, so he was on a 4-up save, re-rolling with a 5-up after save. So he took no damage when those ghouls finally did attack him. Uh, he was able to stop literally all of it. Not a single scratch on him. So that definitely... Uh, that artifact is definitely really strong. I like it a lot. Again, I'm going to make a follow-up video uh, just talking more about Blessed Sons and this list and other things that I might do. Over here in the middle, we just kind of have a little bit of a, a shoving match going on around this center objective. My opponent wasn't able to kill anything, but uh, he doesn't have enough models either to contest it. So I'm still maintaining control out of that of that center objective there. And as you can see, I was able to take out one of the horrors and once I fought back, but my Blight Kings are in trouble on uh, my opponent's objective there on the left-hand side. And this is the beginning of the next turn. He brought back even more horrors because <laughs> he was just in range. So... That unit's back up to full, and my Blight Kings are pooping their pants. But we are pretty much uh, at the final throws of the game here. So those slides were a little out of order, but uh, my opponent scored two at the end of the third battle round. So the score is 16 to 8. Uh, my opponent gets priority in the fourth battle round, so he was able to get a double turn. And as you saw, he brought back a bunch of horrors at the beginning of his turn. So let's see what he was able to do with that. 
uh, those ghouls, they just retreated away onto that objective, uh, afraid of getting uh, mashed up by the Harbinger that was still in combat. And I think my Blight Kings may have also still been within three inches to get some additional attacks in. So that could have been bad for him if he didn't retreat out of that combat. Over in the middle, my Great Unclean One managed to kill the Vargolf, but the Abhorrent Arch Regent is still hanging in there and killed the Blight King and is moving on to the Great Unclean One, who's now up to 21 wounds on him. And of course, the Horrors do their thing and do a bunch of damage to my Blight Kings, who are, of course, not long for this world. And this is a shot just back over there again. I'm not really sure why uh, this picture happens to be in there, but it is. There we go. Uh, at the end of the fourth battle round, um, or end of the top of the fourth battle round, my opponent scored two more. So we are up to 10 to 16. Uh, on my turn, I just retreated everybody out of combat and made sure that I was still holding objectives. So I was still holding the middle. Uh, the left objective on my opponent's side of the table was just a loss, as was the one on the right-hand side. So I just didn't engage, and I thought it was just going to be better off holding on to the objectives that I knew I had and riding it out. Uh, because it, at this point, if I just score this four points, it's putting me in a position where my opponent just can't win in the fifth battle round. Uh, that's just me retreating that Blight King out of combat. And this is just that other unit of Blight Kings. I had a unit of five Blight Kings that I never moved throughout the game. They were just kind of hanging out over there. I also never summoned anything throughout this game. Uh, in my first couple of turns, I actually even just forgot to uh, do my Contagion points. Because I haven't played Nurgle in a while, so it was just a thing that I forgot about. Thankfully, it didn't really come into play. I didn't need summoning points. And because I got alpha on turn one, I wasn't going to be collecting a ton of those anyway. So, we called it at the end of the fourth battle round. The score was 20 to 10. Uh, so, it was a big win for Papa Nurgle. So, just out of fairness and to note here... My opponent definitely had a lot of bad rolls throughout this game. Um, those terror geists could have and should have done way more damage than they actually did. I was rolling out of the box on like my Blight Kings and things like that. That just it, they were doing more damage than they should have. I had a lot of really strong saving throws, so th that was certainly something that was contributing to this. But I think overall this was just a good matchup for me. I w had a lot more bodies than my opponent had. So just getting two places and having my models survive put me in a position where uh, I was able to really kind of take advantage of my opponent's low model count. Um, I had a lot more wounds on the table than he did, which also was a contributing factor. Um... The extra chip damage that you get off of Blessed Sons was really worth it. Um, I believe I used the command trait to use at the double for free, I think three times out of four turns. So that is, you know, three free command points effectively. And I was able to do a bunch of other work with various things. So I think Blessed Sons is really... Um, it adds just enough to Nurgle, I think, to really make it a lot more competitive than it already was. So, again, I'm going to be doing more coverage of that in another video. Uh, this was a really good game, had a lot of fun, and uh, overall, just a, a solid uh, showing on on both sides, I really have to say. And then this was just a picture of the board at the end of the game, kind of zoomed out. Um, 
yeah, just all kind of speaks for itself there. And, you know, just want to throw credit over to uh, our friendly local game store that we're playing at, uh, the Battle Standard in East Windsor, Connecticut. So thank you to them for having these awesome tables for us to play on. This is just one of 12 tables, I believe, that they had, you know, fully set up with beautiful terrain, uh, open to everybody to just come in and play with. Uh, Fantastic, great store, um, had a great time. This is just where we always play on a weekly basis every Wednesday. If you happen to be in the uh, Connecticut or Western Mass area, come on down on Wednesday nights. We've got uh, people always there uh, for games, as well as having some form of league running pretty much all the time. So Battle Standard, East Windsor, Connecticut, come on down and join us. And we are starting to get fairly regular tournaments as well. So be on the lookout for those. I'll be promoting those on Facebook and on Twitter once uh, once anything gets scheduled. So that is it for now, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked the video. Hit that notification bell to get notified anytime we have a new upload. And if you really like what we do, come out and support us on Patreon. We've got a link down in the description. 100% of our Patreon proceeds go directly back into the channel for making improvements to our content. So that is all for now, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all later.